Good day, everybody. Welcome back to DCS. Um, today we're going to look at the Herc mod, uh, the C-130J Hercules mod that's uh, free from Anubis. One of my favorites, personally. It's just a lot of fun. So we're going to take a little walk into the uh, back here and get into the cockpit. Nice uh, Sunday morning flight here. A lot of cool details on this uh, construction here. They did a really good job on this. Pilot doors work good. Of course, you see the AI pilots in there because we're not in the cockpit mode here. So let's jump in. And uh, so I'm going to do this without track IR just for simplicity. Um, a little bit anyway. Um, let's get my camera positioned here where I want it to go here just to make it easier for the startup process and I will also start with the uh, flashlight on as well because it is a little hard to see in here uh, startup is pretty simple on this it's a uh, very you know just an APU starts type of setup here so you got your generators up top center APU power and when we get to it off is internal power so that will be turned off later again um, so we'll switch that to APU battery is on mind the voltage um, then on the very bottom here is the APU panel and double click on the stop run start and you have to hold down the start this is all right click and once it uh, takes off on you then you know it's up and running there it goes let that spool up to 100 percent you hear the APU outside running I get the windows are still open now you see our voltage has gone up to 27.8. We're on the APU generators. Uh, from here, we go to bleed air. Left click on open. And you'll see the bleed air starts to rise up to the 40% pressure there. From here, we're ready to start the main engines. But what we'll want to do, let me zoom out a little bit here so we can see both panels at the same time here. So these are going to be the ones, the center panel here is what you want to keep your eye on when we start. There's your engines uh, and pressures. Oops. Uh, engine start nozzle or uh, selectors here works just like the APU. Uh, you double click, uh, run, and then hold the start, and the green light will come on. Um, and then down here you'll watch the uh, NGT fire up, and once it takes off on its own, you know you can let go of the start button. Um, I always go from inside the outboard, it's just uh, the way I do it. Hold the start, green light's coming on. Watch that gauge down there as it starts to uh, take off. And off it goes. And one thing that you also want to note uh, I'll try to do this where you can see the bleed air pressure. If you do it too quickly, the bleed air pressure will drop too low um, and you won't be able to start the next engine. But once it's back to 40, you can go ahead and start the next engine. I'll start number three next. Wait for the NG to take off and we know it's good to go. Boop, there it goes. back to engine one and get it started it is a little easier without track IR doing this because otherwise you're in that left seat trying to look around and look up here um, so if you have a way of pausing your track IR to do this it's it does help makes it a little easier you know go ahead and start for and we'll let everything stabilize and get back into the uh, position here. Off 
we go. All right, that's up and running. I'll let that stabilize before I turn the APU off. I'll go ahead and move into the uh, pilot seat here a little bit more. If you're not familiar with this, this does have windows you can close. Um, it will get a little quieter, and it also shows that the windows are open. Oops down here on the uh, ACAWS which tells you all the stuff that's going on. Uh, flight deck window is still open. So we'll go ahead and close the other window. And we'll see that indicator go off. So now that all the engines are running, we'll go back up to this top panel. Turn the uh, generator to off. That will put everything on the main engine generator. And we'll go ahead and hit the stop button on the APU. And that will shut that down. Notice that there's no voltage change now that the uh, APU is still on because we're on the uh, main generators. If you leave it on APU it will drop on you. Alright. So at this point you can... Ah! Sorry about the jitteriness. I'm not used to not using track IR. Uh, on the side of the uh, heads up display here you can Click on that, and that will bring down your display. And uh, we'll try to get in the position here where that's where it's supposed to be. Because we'll look at that here in a moment. So there's also uh, cabin lighting down here. Put the dome lights on. That'll help us see things a little bit better. Not much, but uh, a little bit. Instrument lighting is still a little bit uh, hit or miss on here. Not uh, doesn't work, I don't think. So what's really cool about this module is you, it comes with a script that we put in the mission that allows it to carry and drop cargo, which is I mean, that's what it's for, right? Dropping cool stuff and. Uh, so that's pretty cool. One of the things that you can do with it uh, that I find is really useful in the startup procedure here is going up to a little computer on your right hip here. If you click on the uh, TOLD, the Toll Takeoff and Landing Data, um, and click Index, Takeoff Landing Data, there's your takeoff data. Click on that, and it will tell you your speeds. Um, for your current weight and uh, configuration. So default you're going to be flaps down on the start so we'll go ahead and bring our flaps up to the 50 percent. There's your flaps right, right in front of that panel. Bring that to 50 percent for takeoff. And now we're going to match the uh, takeoff and landing data. So if we hit export it's going to show us what we have currently. Um, so from here, oops, sorry guys, uh, definitely not used to using, uh, not using track IR anymore. It's kind of a crutch now. You almost get so used to it. So now, if you look at the uh, heads-up display, we'll actually see the uh, minimum flight speed and then the rotation speed on the speedometer now. That wasn't there before we hit the export button, and that will change here in a moment once we load cargo. Um, first things first, though, let's go ahead and close the doors. Um, make sure I hit the right button here. What we can do is look at our... There's the entry doors. Cargo ramp will stay down. Um, we can go ahead and turn on the auxiliary... pump over here. On the hydraulic panel, look for the auxiliary pump on. You'll want to go ahead and turn that on uh, at the start once you get everything powered on. That's going to power the tailgate. And that will stay an indicator uh, on here that the uh, auxiliary pump is on while it's on. And once that reaches the 3000 PSI mark, it will actually go off. There it goes. Get one turned off there. Let me 
do have lights that we can turn on. And we'll go ahead and extend the landing lights, taxi lights. I don't think the wingtip lights are modeled yet. And we'll do the floodlight over here as well. All right. So now that that's done, the aircraft is running at this point. Um, you're, you can take off. One thing that you'll want to do, however, is uh, make sure you bind. Why is my zoom? This is why I don't like using, not using track IR because it really screws with your. I don't know where my head position has gone here. Now my HUD is all messed up. Let's hop out to the outside here. We'll take a look at the cargo. So now that we got a working jet, uh, well, turboprop anyway, um, take a look at the uh, the H Group Airlines livery I made for our group. It's designed to be a bit more of a ragtag, kind of down and dirty look to it. Um, but the cool thing is, let me zoom it out a little bit here so it's a little quieter. If you go to your rearm refuel menu, is you get cargo. Uh, this is the coolest part. So one thing you can do, and there's a bunch of different options here. I would focus on the pods. Uh, you can carry different cargoes like uh, ammo to different bases and then unload it at the base to resupply it. So those are crates for doing that uh, in the air to ground and air to, uh, air to air as well as the bomb crates. Um, and the nice thing is Mark 82s are on there, so you can keep your air bases supplied with Mark 82s. Uh, but for airdrop purposes, you want to focus on pods. Um, now, the only po uh, cargo compartment that you can drop troops from is from the forward compartment. So we'll go ahead and load up 30 of those guys. And then one thing you want to pay attention to on this is there's two different types. Uh, we'll just focus on the... Uh, my Humvee. And uh, there's a two different types. There's a skid and an air. So you, if you're going to drop from the air, you want to make sure you pick an air. Um, if you click on skid, it's basically the uh, the landing drop that you can spin them out the cargo out the uh, back while you're trying to uh, just just skirt across the ground. The lapes drop is what they what they call it. So it does work. It's a uh, it's a little bit funky how it's modeled, but it does work. And then uh, we'll go from there. I'll leave the fuel as it. And this is the coolest part. You get to see the cargo actually load up. Uh, once it pops in. There it is. And now all the vehicles will show up as the, uh, the crates. Um, and this livery does have a, a custom paint job on that, so that's uh, pretty cool that I made. Make sure the, the parachutes are green. Hopefully in the future they will actually allow you to drop troops from uh, all three compartments. That would be quite nice, but uh, it is what it is. And uh, So we'll go ahead and close the tailgate at this point. We are loaded. And we'll jump back into the cockpit. And let me see if I can... Why is my view all skewed up here? Oh well. It'll be alright. Oh well, dang it. Mistake thing. Hey, you center view. There we go. Um, so now we have the cargo is closed, but we still have PSI... At 3,000, we can go ahead and turn off the auxiliary pump. It will have enough to uh, to drop it once we uh, open it back up for the airdrop. Uh, we'll leave the landing lights and all that on for now. Uh, one thing that's also critical um, with this mod is making sure you have uh, a few key bindings that are fairly critical. One of which is the beta throttle. And I'll show you what I mean here. It's uh, beta mode. Uh, 
and you want to make sure you have that in the button because I'll show you here in a minute. If you try to taxi without beta mode, it will not taxi very friendly for you. Uh, it's uh, it's almost impossible to taxi. Um, here we go. So what you have to do is I select beta mode, and I bump my throttle, and you'll see that throttle bumps back, and it also says beta on the engine panel there. Uh, now it's now that's active and uh, functioning. So now that we loaded cargo, uh, if I remember correctly, it said 102 previously for the rotate speed. Now it's up to 112. So that updates as you change cargo. Uh, so that's pretty slick. Uh, let's get this back centered here. And we can go ahead and turn off the flashlight. We won't need that. But let's go ahead and get in the air and uh, try to drop some troops. few other things that you'll need to do to drop troops uh, is make sure you have all of the doors modeled or uh, bound. You'll need the air deflectors and the paratrooper doors bound to uh, a control on your HOTAS. Uh, we'll show you that here in a moment from the exterior what that looks like. Uh, It's really cool because, I mean, this is something that you normally don't see in DCS, at least modeled, you know, is the cargo aspect of things. You know, everybody's so focused on doing the jet stuff that it gets uh, overlooked. But these guys have done a really good job with this mod. Uh, one of the best ones out there, except for maybe the A4, pretty much right on target, same same quality. All right. And so we are ready to take off and we'll go ahead and power up. Get the engines up and stabilized until we start to roll. And the brakes do hold it at full power. Uh, just be ready on the uh, left pedal a little bit because it will lurch a little bit on you. Uh, and we're going to watch that uh, speedometer there on the left side of the hub until it gets to the VR speed. The rotate speed. Insular like air base is really hilly apparently. Uh, so approaching the VR speed, and we'll go ahead and touch the stick back, and off we go. Easy as that. Land the gear up. I'll leave the flaps up for a little bit longer, typically just to get uh, get moving. Autopilot uh, works on here. There's also a bunch of different features that you can use uh, on the uh, computer and the uh, displays. Uh, waypoints do work if you have them preset into the mission editor, which for the most part on our missions we don't do that. Uh, go ahead and bring our flaps up. There we go. It's hitting the wrong button. Let's jump to the exterior here. I'll show you a little bit of a look. Pretty spectacular. Um, and by far, make sure you set this, the uh, flares because it does have one of the best flare shows in DCS, in my opinion. Um, and uh, so what we'll go ahead and do is set up for an airdrop. And uh, so we'll go ahead and bring the tailgate down. You see the hydraulic pressure over there is uh, dropping, which is fine. If it drops too low, we'll just turn on the auxiliary pump again. Uh, and then we need to open up the troop doors. Oops, wrong nice thing is that all of this is shown down here on the uh, deflectors are open, landing lights are open, 
and paratrooper doors coming open. So now we have all the doors open, and I'll go ahead and bring in uh, quarter flaps on this. Let's give it. Let's climb up to uh, at least a thousand feet before we drop these guys. And we'll also slow down just a little bit. Try to do it under uh, 220. Obviously, it takes practice to uh, hit a target um, for your drop zones, so it takes some practice. You can do it without um, the script in the mission, uh, which allows the, uh, the 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 guys that you drop to actually spawn on the ground after you drop them. Uh, so that's something that you have to keep in mind. We'll go ahead and drop it too. So now that we're ready to drop, uh, one thing you'll need to make sure you set up is your cargo release. Uh, triggers and you can do each cargo bay separately but I do them all in one uh, just to make things simpler uh, but if you're going to do multiple drops it's uh, helpful to actually have those independently bound I just don't have enough buttons so let's jump to the outside and we'll drop some cargo there goes the two Humvees and there goes the troops Right, troops are out. Go ahead and close the air deflectors. And we'll go ahead and close the tailgate while we're at it. We can leave the side doors open. It's not going to hurt anything. And there you have it. Um, landing is fairly straightforward. Obviously, it's, uh, it's a big floater. Um, you can program the beta throttle reverse which is quite handy on the, some of the short fields um, and you can also land this thing in some pretty small areas uh, because of that it does have uh, a JADO option for the uh, rearmory fuel button you'll want to make sure you program a button for that but uh, that makes it pretty fun to take off on some of these small areas or if you're uh, really heavy and uh, just need to get up to that VR speed a lot quicker, it will do it. Uh, let's go ahead and turn back around here, and uh, I think we'll call it quits here. And uh, everybody have fun with the Hercules.